Hello there, friends. How are you? Welcome to Vintage Page Designs, somewhat weekly YouTube Live. Um, if you're here live, um, I'm happy to see you. Hi, Lucy from New Jersey and Pam from snowy Minnesota. Bonnie, Carolyn, Linda, Catherine, Mary Roth. How are you? Catherine is here. Hi, Catherine and Nikki. It's nice to see you here. And if you're watching the replay, it's nice to see you here too. Today, we are going to be creating a little mini matchbook. So this is really um, good for using up scraps on your desk. In the Handmade Book Club this month, um, our sort of monthly project is to make mini um, books in matchboxes or just mini books in general. So I've got mini books on the brain. So this is a project I made earlier in the year and um, I thought I would, I hadn't shared it with ever, with you all. So I thought I would share it with you today. If you um, want to play along the inside pages, this little book block here, they're little two inch squares. And then our outside cover measures two and a quarter inches across by five inches tall. So if you do want to play along and you'll also need um, a needle and thread, a button is optional, washi tape is optional, and um, you'll also need a fairly heavy duty awl. Let me just find mine to make the holes. Um, here it is, kind of heavy duty awl like this. Um, so I'm gonna flip my camera down and I will get to it. Hi Miriam from Italy. All right, let me see. So let me pop me in here. There we go. All right, so this, um, let me just show you what they look like. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, here we go. So here's the mini matchbook. This cover here is a postcard or a piece of postcard from my friend, Andrea Shebalu. And I just added some washi tape to it. So that's made from a little postcard, which is really fun. And I know um, I have many such things lying around, including this one right here that I received this week. So this would also make a very, um, a nice little matchbook. And this one here is made from handmade paper. You can see this one has a button, this one doesn't. It's also a great way to use up scraps of thread as well. Now I'm going to show you how to make one that is two inches square, but you can um, make them different sizes. And as I make this, I will tell you um, how to make it a different size. If say you want to do a three inch square, or maybe you even have like um, a thing of post-it notes that perhaps you want to um, put into one of these. So this is two inches square, but it's um, that's just the size I'm doing it. You don't have to do it that same size. All right. One of the things um, I really like, one of the covers I really like to use is um, old greeting cards. So this is a really nice thank you card from my mother-in-law. And I'm gonna use this as my uh, cover. What you have to keep in mind is that when you are folding the cover, the front cover is gonna be at the top. So you may wanna keep that in mind when you're cutting out um, strips of paper. So with this one, it didn't really matter because it was all the same. But if you have certain something that you want to appear on the front cover, you're just going to want to um, keep that in mind when you're making it. So I'm going to cut out my cover. Let me find my knife. All right, I have lots of tools here today. I'm gonna use a quilting ruler to mark the cover. So the writing is still inside. So I'm gonna probably cover up the writing with some washi tape. So it needs to be two and a quarter inches square because that my little book block is gonna be two inches square. So this needs to be two and a quarter inches wide. So one inch, two inches, two and a quarter. Just gonna put a pencil mark there. And the reason I'm doing a pencil mark is that I don't want to use my knife against that meth, against that plastic ruler because um, it sometimes nicks the side. So I'm going to cut against a metal ruler. There we go. And then I'm going to make it five inches long. I actually think I'm going to use this centerpiece. So let's do another one. 
I could even get two out of this. So there's one inch, two inch, two and a quarter inches. And then the length is going to be five inches. Okay. Get a little bit extra. And now let's make this five inches long. I'm going to measure from this end here so that I cut off these little bits of words. If you don't have a quilting ruler, um, they're really handy to have in a couple different sizes. So I'm making this five inches long. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm using the grid lines on my quilting ruler to make sure it's nice and square. I'm sorry about the light shining in. Okay, so here's my little cover. Do you know, actually I might leave the writing on here because I quite like kind of seeing my mother-in-law's handwriting. Um, so just to reiterate, this is five inches tall. Let's double check, shall we? Five inches tall by two and a quarter inches across. Now I need to score this and I'm gonna just draw it out on a plain piece of paper for you so that you, um, in case you can't see my score lines on here. So let's, let's pretend that this is my cover. I'm gonna score it in four places. Let me show you on the book. We're gonna score twice here to create the little section for the um, book block. And then we're gonna score twice at the top here so that it folds over. So you're gonna do a total of four score lines. The first score line will be here. That's a score line at half an inch. The next score line will be a quarter inch from there or three quarters of an inch from the bottom. Okay, and then the next score line will be two inches up. So this section here is going to be two inches. So that's, uh, let's see, two, two and a half, three and a quarter, I believe. If I got that math wrong, let me know. And then the next one is going to be a quarter inch from there, which is three and a half. So that's one and a quarter plus two is three and a quarter plus a half is three and a quarter. Let me show you that on the actual um, cover and it should make sense once I start doing it. I'm going to draw some heavy lines so that you can see, but um, I don't want you to do this. I'm just, show I'm just going to um, put them in with pen so that you can um, understand what I'm doing. So let's go back to our little template that I drew. Oops, you can't see that. There we go. So I'm using this quilting ruler again, and I'm going to go to the half inch point. If you don't have a quilting ruler, just use a regular ruler or a square like this, whatever you have. Um, you could even use um, a mini quilting ruler like this, which is what I think I'll do. So if you remember the first one, let me just make sure this is going to be the cover. This is going to be my front cover that comes down. So this, I'm starting at the bottom. I'm going to mark a half an inch from the bottom. Let's do it in a pen so that you can see. I'm going to go up another quarter inch from there at three quarters of an inch. So there's the bottom two score lines right there. Then I'm going to go up to three and a quarter. Just right there. Oh, that, you know what? That does not look right to me. Nope. Yes, it's right. Yep. So three and a quarter because this section here is two inches and then at three and a half. Go. And if you don't, like I said, if you don't have a quilting ruler, um, no worries at all. You can just um, use a regular ruler. Okay, so there we have our four little score lines. Half inch, three quarters of an inch, right here, three and a quarter and three and a half. 
We need to score those. Remember, you're not going to do um, those big dark marks. That's just for you to see. This is what I like to score with. It's um, just a, a, a knife. I use the, the blunt edge of the knife. Let's score this. Now, what you're going to find is um, if you use a greeting card or a postcard, there's going to be white inside. So, um, probably not. This is kind of coloured, so it's difficult to see. But when you when you fold along these score lines, when it's a postcard, um, you're going to see the white core of the paper. So if that happens to you, what I like to do is grab some washi tape and cover it over. So that's what I did here. I put, you can barely see it, but I put some layers of washi tape over my score lines to cover up the white inside of the uh, postcard. Let's see if that happens here. Hopefully not. No, I don't think that's gonna happen here. Excellent. Let's go in with our bone folder and just form those creases. And we will, um, then we'll go make our pages. Oops. Do you know what, that just doesn't look right to me. Why is that not right? Hang on. Didn't I tell you it didn't look right? Yep, see, I made this two and a half inches, darn it. All right, should we do that again? So actually this is really good. So can you see this is not gonna close? And that's because I made this in, I mismeasured and this inside area is not two inches square, which is, you know, what I want. Let me find my pages to show you. I'm actually kind of glad that happened. Here's my little pages. They will fit in there, but do you see it's too big? It's because I mismeasured. So what could I do? Um, I could add a piece of um, paper on here. I could like glue an extra piece or I could just cut another cover and I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let's cut another cover. Looks like I'm gonna have to use this or should I? Or should I? Maybe I'll use this instead. This might be a good thing to use. This is, um, if you've just done the recent five day challenge, you, will, um, you might recognize this. This is a piece of copier paper with vintage paper and then a napkin over the top. So let's do that again. Two and a quarter. There we go. That part we had right, it was just the, um, the length. There we go. Now let's make it five inches long. That part's right. So let's get the score in right this time. So I might do, I might use um, my uh, ruler like this and it might be easier for me to see as well as you. So let's go back to our little um, diagram. We've got half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Then we want two inches from there. I think actually this was what the issue was. Maybe not. Well, two inches from there and then another quarter inch. Okay. So let's see. Yep, this is where the um, error was. So this is half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and then it's two and three quarters and three. There we go. Nothing like being live, right? <laughs> there we go. And then two inches. There we go. It's more like it, my friends. You know, if you're watching this live, I wonder if um, we'll edit out the mistake. No, we won't. We all make mistakes. There we go. And then here we are. That's more like it, my friends. So here's my bottom two score lines right there. Here's my top two score lines right there. 
that's more like it. And then this inner section right here is for my two inch square pages. There we go. It's a shame I can't use this. So what I'll probably do is um, sort of make a larger little book block later and then maybe add a little piece of extra um, from here because I do really like this and I'd like to um, sort of have make this little book from my mother-in-law's card. But never mind. So here's my little book. <laughs> Mickey, yeah. can you please? Oh, no, I won't edit it out. I promise. I promise. Because you know what? Honestly, don't, I mean, it's just, it's just a mini matchbook, right? All right, let's make um, some two inch squares. So I made a whole bunch of journals back in uh, October and I had loads of strips of paper left. So um, I cut them down into these two inch strips. This is sketchbook paper or no drawing paper. I cut them into two inch strips. And then I just went in with my Fiskars paper cutter and cut out all these two inch squares. So this is just plain um, drawing paper, but in um, this little one here, I mixed up um, vintage papers with lined paper and all sorts of different things. So um, feel free to put in whatever papers you would like, scrapbook papers. Um, and then in terms of, you know, what are you gonna do on these pages? You could um, include mini photographs that you've printed. Um, you could use, you could put on here a little, postage stamps. Um, I'm going to use mine to write um, down books that I want to read next year. So um, anything really goes on these little pages. So when you're um, gathering together your stack of um, two inch square pages, what you want to do is make sure that it is a quarter inch thick. The reason being that this section here is a quarter inch thick. So mine isn't quite big enough. So I'm going to cut out a few extras. So where's my pile gone? Mm -hmm. Okay, I've lost the pile. Always good. It's good when you lose a big pile of paper. So I could use my Fiskars. Um, what I could also use is this two inch um, bar. It's a two inch brass bar that I have. So I'm gonna use um, my knife just to cut against it. Um, if you don't have something like this and you want something like this, you can make it out of a uh, cardboard, thick cardboard. So here's a few more um, pages to make it up to a quarter inch thick. And if you're confused by these measurements, um, I'll go over them one more time before the video ends. Um, yes, that looks, it's a little bit thick actually, but that's okay. I'd rather it was too thick than too thin. Well, I'll take a few out. There we go. So before you start sewing, just make sure that they fit and then that the cover closes properly. There we go. Yeah, that closes nicely. All right. Um, you can do a button or not. It's entirely up to you. Here's one without. Here's one with. I like the button. So let's do a button. And I know for a fact that you'll have lots of buttons. Let's find one that we like. Um, mm -hmm, that's a cute one. I like that one. Okay. We're going to mark. Oh, I've just flung a button across the room. There we go. All right. I have a pencil. Oops. Let's mark these holes right in the center or thereabouts. Oh, wish we've got a nice lead there. There we go. There's my two holes for the button. Make sure that looks good. Yep. So that button is going to fit through there. I mean, those um, holes in the button are lined up with those holes. Now we need a binder clip or a clothes pin or, you know, whatever else you have lying around to clip this little book block into place. So we'll take a few more of those out. So you want to center it. You should have about an eighth of an inch either side. I want you to center it. Make sure that it's nice and um, neatly stacked together. Yep, 
you can use, like I said, a quilting clip, a binder clip, whatever you would like. I'll go with a binder clip. And um, make sure that you get this bottom flap as well when you um, put that binder clip in place. Okay, make sure that you've got an eighth of an inch or approximately either side. It's not, you know, not the end of the world. Um, <laughs> Suzanne said, if you need a good reason to make a, if you need a good reason to make a cute little book, then you're probably in the wrong group. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just... <laughs> Okay, so um, heavy duty all. I wouldn't use one of the thin ones, folks. Um, I wouldn't use one of these, reason being, do you see how that's bent? Yeah, that would be because I tried to use that. Don't do that. Um, use a heavier duty one. And you're gonna want, I'm actually gonna put this straight on here. And you, you're gonna wanna push down pretty hard. And then what I usually do is put my index finger on the back and then when I can feel the tip coming through, I uh, remove my finger, but then at least I know I've made it all the way through. Good grief, that's a thick wad of paper. And then you can always come from the other side as well if you want to. I'll tell you something, that is a workout for your hands. Whew. Yikes, okay. I might just be here all day, just have a cup of coffee while I, you know, make a hole. Oh my goodness. I think I might have made my little book block very chunky. And then you can always come through from the other side as well, just to make your life easier when it comes to sewing. There we go. Now I can feel it on the other side, just peeking through. I'm not trying to stab myself. I'm just trying to realize when it's through. There we go. Okay, let's get some scraps of thread. I don't happen to have any on my... Um, Pin cushion right now and that's far too small but you know sometimes you just have a needle with some thread already on your um pin cushion but i don't so um i'm gonna choose i usually um try and put some scraps of thread on a card like this i like this bluey gray color grab ourselves a needle and then it's just a single stitch um through the um, back, through the two holes. Of course, you know, threading a needle, probably the hardest part of this project. Actually, the measuring was the hardest part. There we go. So you're gonna start on the front. What I do is I don't um, put the uh, button on yet. I just do the stitch without the button. So I'm gonna go from the front needle and thread way through. You may want to have a pair of pliers handy because um, it can be hard to pull through there or um, something, you know, like a rubber thimble. Come back through the other side. I mean, that, that's a huge piece of thread. Pull it through. Don't stab yourself in the eye when you pull it out. So here's my thread, I've just got a little stitch on the back. Is this on the front? <laughs> now I have to find the button. Here it is. I'm gonna thread the needle through the button. I mean, thread the thread through the button holes, and then I'll tie a little knot. Okay, there we go, there's one. Make this a bit shorter. Uh, and then you could do a bead here as well, I guess, if you wanted to, instead of a button. I know that you can get nice and creative. So there's my button, here's my two threads. Just tie a square knot, left over right, right over left. Tie a nice knot, let's get rid of the um, binder clip. Let's trim up these two threads, there we go. this away so we don't lose it and then now if you if you need to trim this up you can if you find it hard to get underneath um, 
the cover or the button. You could always take a little extra off. But I'd rather trim it off afterwards than not have enough. So I'm going to take off, I don't know, that's about three eighths of an inch. There we go. And you can either tuck it under the button or tuck it under the flap like that. And there's your little matchbook. Oh, I do really like the napkin and the vintage paper showing through. Um, let's run through the um, some other options as well. You could, um, here's another one that I might do. It's the same uh, napkin covered paper. I've already done the cover. Here's the cover. Um, you could do little um, squares of watercolor paper. This would be really fun. Um, I'm not sure, I'd probably only get like eight watercolor pages in here, but that would be a very cute um, gift to do a mini watercolor journal with a little set of paints. Um, that would be a very nice gift. Um, and then if you wanted to go bigger, so let's just say you had a stack of papers which were um, say three inches square, you would, you would make your cover three and a quarter inches wide instead of two and a quarter inches wide. So just make your cover um, a quarter inch wider than the width of the little book block that you want to want to use. Um, let's just run through those measurements one more time because I've obviously confused the heck out of you and me. Let's look at these one more time. So here's my sophisticated template. This is for a two inch times two inch book. Well, it's actually two and a quarter, but our book block is two inches square. It's five inches long. It's two and a quarter inches wide. Maybe I'll do this in pen so you can see. It's five inches long. Wide. And then my score lines are at a half inch, three quarters of an inch. Let's double check so we don't get it wrong. Two and three quarter inches and three inches. Okay, so these are my score lines right there. That's what you need to make the little matchbook. And then if you need to trim off the edge, you can. Um, but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, just depends. How cute is that little book? And I'm gonna use mine too. And when I'm, when I'm reading a book, there might be another author that they reference. So I'm just gonna use this book to write down all the authors I, I wanna read next year. And I can just keep that by my reading chair and um, use it whenever, whenever I feel the need. Um, Donna says, I can see a question. If I don't want to use a button, you don't have to, no. So uh, where's the other book? This one right here, using the postcard from Andrea, doesn't use a button, it just uses thread. Uh, let me take that out. What else? Ch -ch -ch Chrissy, I love this. Chrissy Chan said, um, you could do a My Contacts, so you could do a little address book. That would be really fun. Um, what else, what else? Ch -ch -ch -ch. Book binding supplies. Um, and Ingrid said she might use a drill bit. Yep, you could. And um, you could even use a Japanese screw punch, but um, it's fairly thick um, to use a Japanese screw punch roll. But yes, you could use a little um, drill if you want to, especially if you're making a lot of them and your hands would be very sore. Um, let's see, is it wax linen thread? Yes. So um, these are just scraps of either three or four ply wax linen threads, Lucy. Um, and I would definitely, um, if you wanna use embroidery floss or, or whatever else you have lying around, just add some wax to it because the, these can be quite difficult to, um, these holes are quite difficult to sew through. So you'll definitely want some wax there. Great question. All right wine tasting notes. 
Oh, now you are talking my language, Donna. Let me um, come out of this screen. There we go. Wine tasting notes. Um, would a, KT says, would a Japanese screw punch work to make the holes? Yes, it would. The only thing with a Japanese screw punch is, I feel like it would be a lot of work on your wrist. You could do like a one or two millimeter um, tip, but I feel like your arms will be aching. I, I think it would be easy to do it with an awl. Um, but you certainly could use Japanese scrubbage. I think a cropper dial would, the um, hole would be too big. Um, let's see. Where do you get a good quality all? Says Barb. Good question. Um, this one here, I am sure, is from Hollanders. You can also buy them from Talis. You can also get them from Colophon. Also probably get them from Volcano Arts, John Neal. Most of the bookbinding um, suppliers will sell uh, an all like this and it's five dollars really inexpensive and when you're buying an all like this get as big a bulb as you can because it's going to go in the in the palm of your hand and you're going to grip it like this so the bigger it is bigger this ball you can get ones with quite with larger balls on the top um, than this the bigger it is the more comfortable it's going to be for your hands and I know how we all suffer with sort of painful hands. For a three inch book, this is a great question from Melody. Oops, let me pop it on the screen. <laughs> I, think, I think Amber and I are both trying to put it on the screen at the same time. For a three inch, three inch book block, would the length be seven inches? Let's see. Um, how would I do the length of that? So three, six, you know, I would probably do a little more. I would do say seven or seven and a half. I would do seven and a half just to be um, sure and then trim off the extra. Because um, if I tell you seven, it's not enough and you'd be disappointed. So just do seven and a half and then trim the end. Great question. Can I show the sewing one more time? I certainly could. Um, so this is a great um, tip from Beth. She dipped the bottom edge of her book block. So this is the book block, all your little stack of papers. Beth, I'm, I'm guessing, held them together, so with a clip, and then dipped it in PVA. So that kind of held them in place when she was sewing. So um, that's a great tip. I like it. Let me, um, I'll flip down and I'll show the sewing one more time. Let's see. There we are. Let's just push everything to one side. Um, I'm not going to unpick this book because that would make me very sad. Let's um, let's just do a let's do a pretend book, shall we? Let's do a pretend book. So this is um, so here's my um, is the edge of my uh, little matchbook. It's my button. Here's my two sewing holes for the button. imagine that my book block is in here and I've poked through all of those holes Get there. it's just a it's just a simple um, stitch like it's one stitch so you start you go all the way through just have to imagine that there are pages in this book. You start at the front. You go all the way through to the back, like this. Leaving a tail on the front. On the back, you're just gonna have a simple running stitch. Go through all of your pages 
and back through to the front cover. So on this front cover, you've got two loose long stitches. If you're doing a button, you pop the button on right now and then you tie a square knot on the front like this. So on the back of the book you have, and then you trim on the back of the book, you just have a single stitch like that and two holes. On the front, you have either a button on and a knot or no button and a knot. So it looks like that. You could go through twice, but honestly, it's really difficult. Do you glue the back of the block? No, I didn't. No, I mean, you, you could. You could, certainly. Um, Kathleen says, what are the score lines for a three-inch book? <laughs> I'm not sure you, I can be trusted to do that. Um, let me see if I can work that out for you. I'll do my best. I might just have to get my calculator out, right? Let's pretend that this is a three-inch book. Um, let's see. So we'd st I'd still do half an inch and three quarters of an inch. So that would be half. That would be three quarters. Then we've got, this is three. So, all right, let me, I'm, I really probably need someone who's better at math than this. So a half plus three quarters of an inch is one and a quarter plus three. So I think, I think, oh, I don't know if this is going to be right. This section here is three inches. So, I mean, this section here is three inches. So your score line will be um, three and three quarters. I think four and a quarter, I think. But please don't quote me. Yes, thank you. Is it three and three quarters? Yes, you're right, three and three quarters. Oh my gosh, see, my math is terrible. This is gonna be three and three quarters. And then the next line right there will be at four. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, honestly, yeah, math is not my strong suit. So for a three inch book, it'd be half an inch, three quarters of an inch, three and three quarters and four. So what I was doing was adding those two numbers together, but you just add this and three. Okay. It takes a village, my friends. It takes a village to uh, figure out the um, measurements on all these books. Yes, add from the end the running total. You're right, Angela. You are right. <laughs> all right. Let me um, let me pop back on screen. I think I think that's it for today, my friends. Unless you have any more questions. Um, let me just see if there are any more. I'm sure Amber will pop them on the screen if they're right here. Look, everyone's doing it. Three, three quarters, three, three quarters. <laughs> I know. I never claim to be a math genius, but um, I can make an awfully cute book. And I know that you can too. So I look forward to um, seeing your mini matchbooks. Feel free to um, share them on Instagram or if you um, are a book club member and you're in the Facebook group or on in the community forum on Circle, feel free to share them there. Um, and if you do share on Instagram, let me just pop up my Instagram. Uh, don't forget to um, tag us. Let's see. Here is here's our Instagram. Uh, don't forget to tag us so that we can, um, can see what you have made. I will be back. Um, I will be here next week live, my friends, on Thursday. Even though it's Christmas week, I'll be back here at noon Eastern. And um, I will be just doing an open Q&A. So um, I'll be answering any questions that you have. So we will um, have a form to pre-submit questions, or you can just show up and ask the questions live. Um, preferably nothing that involves math would be great. Um, but I'm an open book. I can answer any questions you have about bookmaking supplies, bookmaking techniques, um, anything else you can think of. So um, I will see you back here next week. A big thank you to Amber Weaver 
who is here in the background helping out with different links. She has just popped a link into, um, thank you, Amber, in the chat for the online store. Uh, I really feel like today is probably the last day for shipping. Um, I have a big box in my car full of punching cradles. So if you haven't got your punching cradle yet, heading over to the store and order one. Um, I'll be able to get that out today. But um, otherwise, my friends, have a wonderful week and I will see you back here in seven days. All right. Take care, folks. Enjoy making your uh, mini matchbooks. Can't see what, can't wait to see what you make. <laughs>